I'm greatly honored that uh, you uh, came here to, to listen to my lecture here. And uh, it's a great honor for us, or for our team, together with uh, Elisabeth Skala. She's doing the lower extremity session and I'm doing the upper extremity session. So, uh, what was the point of uh, sonography? Don't mind, there's only my name here. The first I'm starting with is the sonography of peripheral nerves in the upper extremity, the plexus and so on. And we have about 30, 40 minutes. I gave you a scan there. I'm doing the scan at the standard presets. If you get a machine of Canon Medical, these are the presets you have on the machine. I could come here and uh, show you all the things with my presets. You will say, yes, that's fine. Yeah. But, but uh, I, have, I do not have these presets. So we do it with the standard presets. And um, the point is also that Canon came to us with high frequency probes and asked us, what should we do? What are they for? What is the uh, sense of this high frequency in musculoskeletal ultrasound? And that's what I want to show you. What uh, Dr. Sim already told you, we have a center, a center of excellence for nerve sonography. I'm doing nerve sonography, um, by the way, for about 20 years now. And let's have a look on topography, how to find the nerves, and how to assess the nerves. So, I try to change. This is our waiter, and this waiter brings us things. You need prerequisites to do nerve sonography. Even if you do the median nerve at the carpal tunnel, but before all these small tiny nerves is what you need information on landmarks. You do not look for the nerves themselves, you look actually for the landmarks. And this is the way we do, this is the uh, already told by Christoph Sim, the English version of our book, basing on learned marks, finding every nerve in the body. Also the tiny, tiny ones. Yeah? Also the ones you have to look first in an anatomy book. What was the nerve that does make this pain, or this pain, or whatever? Yeah? You will find them by landmarking, basing on algorithms. <coughs> so. How does, does a nerve look like? That's the first, the first uh, problem you have. You must identify a nerve. And the nerve looks always the same. It has fascicles, as you can see here. These are groups of axons formed by soft tissue, by tiny soft tissue bands. And these fascicles here, together, also uh, enveloped by a uh, soft tissue uh, sheath is then, or finally, a peripheral nerve. Large peripheral nerves have many fascicles. They look like this, many fascicles. Tiny nerves have maybe only one fascicle or two. Actually, with new probes, we got from Canon Medical up to 33 megahertz. <coughs> we can also see, or even see in these single fascicles, uh, how they are built up. Yeah? The structure of these inner fascicles. You will see, I um, will start uh, the scanning with a 40 megahertz probe. You see this nerve is one dot running in a typical topographic uh, situation. But even if you have higher frequency, better uh, scanners, better probes, you see the inner texture by sonography. And what is the image you see then by uh, the ultrasound? is something like this. This is a rather uh, old picture. I brought it to you because also in this rather old picture, about 10 megahertz, yeah, you see these fascicles. You see the echoic uh, soft tissue bands dividing the fascicles one to another from another. Yeah? And this all together with the outer nerve sheet, the echoic outer nerve sheet is a peripheral nerve. Keep this image in mind. 
and nerve sonography will be no problem for you. So, I have also a menu for you, <coughs> and I show you some standard nerves, just to make your eye used to this image, and some starters, nerves you may remember. Main dishes, nerves maybe you may not remember, but we can see, we can uniquely see by sonography. The point of these nerves to detect is blocking, anesthetic blocking, and some specials, very tiny branches of peripheral nerves, maybe for pain-driven patients by a hand drum or something like this. So, let's start with the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve has a also typical topography, and where can you find it? <coughs> you have a landmark, you have to scan, start the scan by, dividing the, uh, by defining the landmark like this, two fingers proximal to the epicondyl at the uh, ulnar surface of the extremity. And here, if you pu uh, put the, the probe here, you have this image. You have the bone, the humeral bone, you have the triceps muscle, and you have this nerve. It's a rather large nerve. It's proximal, this position is proximal to the cubital tunnel. The cubital tunnel is usually at the point where minor trauma, repeated minor trauma, uh, make lesions to the nerve, to the ulnar nerve, and the patients come uh, to the doctor and uh, say, yeah, there's numbness in the small thing and so on. So this is a very important uh, region for defining the peripheral nerve here. The probe position here. And you see this image, yeah? <coughs> so, go on. It's maybe a little annoying for the guys, they are already doing this uh, nerve sonography, the median nerve. Who knows the median nerve? Who does scanning in the median nerve? Where do you start? Scanning the median nerve? On the lower extremity, proximal, okay. That's okay. And that's where you find it. So the landmark is if you do it ten, 10 times, you will find it without landmarks. But the landmark for this nerve is the brachial artery. The brachial artery has a typical position concerning the nerve in the elbow region. You define it by outer landmarks and you define it by inner landmarks. And you will see this typical dotted pattern of the cross-section area of this nerve again. Yeah? If you have the nerve, it is, the nerve has always this position. There's no variant. You can follow the nerve from this position on. And the last appetizer, again a large nerve of the upper extremity is the radi radial nerve, nervus radialis. And this nerve is best found where? Where do you look for this nerve? The posterior aspect of the humerus. <coughs> and Due to the inner texture of muscles, which cover the nerve, this nerve could be uh, visualized maybe a little, a little ambiguously. Yeah? But here in this position, between the brachioradial muscle and the brachial muscle, in this position, we we'll see the indication here, you find the nerve in this septum. Here the nerve has already two parts in this in this image. Why? Do you have any idea? What could be the point why we have two nerves here? Is it normal? Is it expected? That's correct. That's correct. These are the final branches. The branching is beginning already at different heights in the uh, upper extreme, in, in the proximal upper extremity. Yeah? This can, could be variable. You can also have one nerve with typical fascicular pattern at this position. <coughs> but usually you have already this partition in the profound and the superficial branch of the radial nerve. In this image, just also to uh, teach your eye, where is the nerve actually? Is the nerve in the muscle? Where is the nerve by topography? 
It's always in the septum. The fascias, the septi, are always the leading point for this peripheral nerve. You can never find a peripheral nerve without septi or resembling structures within a nerve, uh, within, sorry, within a muscle. There's always to follow soft tissue, there's always maybe to follow vessels, the neighboring vessels, <coughs> sometimes in some uh, special cases, but have an eye on this situation in the septi. If you have this in mind, you will find a lot of nerves that usually follow this pattern. So, this were the large nerves. Most of you already did scan these three nerves, these are standards. If there are neurologists, they always come to us and want to see this uh, compressive neuropathies. What do they, do they want to see? The median nerve and the ulnar nerve. So for us, it's rather annoying. And if you're a little or more addicted to sonographer, you want to see the, the cool ones. Yeah? You want to see and begin with the starters at, for example, the phrenic nerve. Do you know the phrenic nerve? Do you know what the phrenic nerve is? doing? That's the nerve for innervation of the diaphragm. You need it for breathing. So, where does it come from? This is all information you have to have in your mind, somewhere back. This information is already, you have to find it again. The phrenic nerve has also typical topography. You define the sternocladeate muscle, muscle <coughs> sorry, my my voice is a little hampered. The sternocladeate muscle, the head turned a little to the contralateral position, and this nerve comes out of C4, turns around the anterior scalene muscle and runs on the ventral surface like a spiral downward to the aperture of the thorax. Outer landmarks, inner landmarks, you have rather thick, or rather huge anterior scalene muscle, and you have this sternocladeate muscle. If you have these two landmarks in mind, you have also veins, then have a look, you see the nerve. The nerve is running at this position, at the ventral surface of the scalene muscle downward. And you can also see here, we have about 21 megahertz, used here for this scan. And this nerve has only little inner soft tissue. So the texture is not as expected from scanning. Median nerve, for example, has not this uh, fascicular pattern. You only see one tract running down hyperechoically without inner texture change. So what we are expecting at higher frequencies has not to be eventually for the, for the phrenic nerve, but for other nerves, the uh, assessment of the inner texture, for example, in such tiny nerves. So this is an easy one. Phrenic nerve. I brought a scan for you. This is real. Can you see the phrenic nerve? Who can see the phrenic nerve? This is the laser pointer. Please show us the phrenic nerve. I want to be sure. This one? What is the, what is the landmarks? What did we uh, talk about the landmarks? Is the sternocladeate muscle? Yes, this large one. And the anterior scalene muscle. This is this one. There is a huge muscle. Okay? And it has to run at the surface of the scalene muscle. Yes! Yeah, don't be sorry. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah? And you identified, sorry? Yes. You identified because of the pattern. Yeah, you expected how a nerve has to look like. Yeah? And you expected, again, let's it run again. This should also be a nerve, and that's right. That's a larger one. Runs between the jugular vein and the carotid artery. And this is the vagal nerve. Okay? Oh, but it's perfect. I'm impressed. And following the landmarks, this must be the phrenic nerve. Yeah? Perfect. Hey, great job. So, the next, oh, again, a, a uh, scanning movie loop. You have, again, the 
anterior scalene muscle. Maybe it starts again. No. Just want to show you. Finally, we're radiologists. You can depict it also longitudinally. Have a look on that. This is the phrenic nerve running down. And you have a little impression, at least, that it has a fascicular pattern. Yeah? It's not without, without echoic inner texture, like a, like a vein or something like this. But you also see these tiny nerves can be depicted longitudinally. Yeah? It's feasible. Basing on the landmarks technique. And another, another starter nerve that, that uh, makes it more funny to scan uh, uh, these, these nerves is the musculus cutaneous nerve. Do you know the musculus cutaneous nerve? Mm -hmm. What is it doing? Do you need it? Maybe yes, if I ask like this. Eh? <laughs> so the muscular cutaneous nerve is one of the nerves that help us to flex the elbow. Yeah? Innervates the brachial muscle, muscular cutaneous muscle biceps muscle, and has a final branch for a sensor, a sensory innervation of the lower arm, the lateral side of the lower arm. And uh, why did I bring it to you is because it, again, has a typical position, has a typical landmarking. You have the coracal disposition of the, of the, of the uh, patient, for example, the definition of the medial uh, brachial groove, by the index finger, and you see two large muscles. The corcobrachial muscle, humerus, on, and the uh, biceps muscle. And between these both muscles, there is a rather huge triangle, echoic triangle, soft tissue, and within this soft tissue, the nerve has to run. He cannot r run next to here or here. He runs within this soft tissue sheath. If you know the landmarks, you know the nerve. Another nerve, accessory nerve, nervus accessorius. What is this nerve for? Do you know this nerve for instance? Yes, perfect. What is the nerve doing? <laughs> lifting, lifting the shoulders like this. So it's innervating the trapez muscle. It's innervating the uh, sternocleidoid muscle. Yeah? It's always, it's again, as far as we can say, basing on the uh, present uh, uh, ultrasound technology, is a monofascicular nerve. So we see only one fascicle running in a typical position. What's it looking like? Where do we find it? Sternocleidoid muscle, here. This large, huge muscle. And again, the position where we find at the punctum nervosum. This is the crossing of the platysm muscle, here. You see it like this. You can, if you want to find it, we can, we can try with our, with our proband. Like this, look like this. Grimacing, yeah? This is the platysm and the crossing of the platysm. Yes, do it like this. Yeah, the crossing of the platysm and the sternocleidoid muscle. There is the punctum nervosum. That's where they are uh, easily to be found. Yeah? And you see nerves again, and you see these monofascicular nerves. And you see again, the lady, two nerves. You see it? The same image. This nerve and this nerve. We learned the accessory nerve is innervating also the sternocleidoid muscle. So the nerve must run at or within the muscle. What do you think? Within. Hmm? It's running through. And this nerve is running on the sternocleidoid muscle. This is the auricularis magnus nerve. Yeah? Funny thing, this landmarking. Yeah? You find them all. It runs underneath the uh, trapezius muscle, and if you have a sagittal scan, this trapezius muscle 
looks like a wedge, more or less. Yeah? Again, we start again the, the, the scanner. This is the sternocleidoid muscle. Here is where the nerve is entering the muscle. And again, here the nerve, trapezius muscle, comes out, comes out, profound cervical fascia, going up, 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 up. You can follow it underneath the sternocleidoid muscle and then entering or passing this muscle again in a large septum. Again, always the same pattern. Landmarks, relation to the muscles, and always the same pattern. The texture, the running, the running in fascias, the running combined with a soft tissue, septi or fascias. So, because I have already started with this nerve, and this is a very funny nerve. Why funny? It's innervating the ear. It has something to do with pain-driven patients. It has something to do with um, migraine-like head aches. Yeah, this is a, it's a, it's a uh, work in progress presently in our, in our uh, center. Also, uh, like the, like the uh, major occipital nerve, for example. But you have to find the auricular magnus uh, uh, nerve, and I will show it to you. And you can scan it, scan it yourself at home, and you will always find it. How? Again, grimacing, punctum nervosum, yeah, sternocleidoid. And here, at the punctum nervosum, read again your anatomy books. There are several sensible nerves. They are uh, executing here. And these are usually uh, roots, sensory roots, of the uh, segment C2 to C4. Yeah? They're innovating sensoric informations of the skin until here, upward, including the ear, and this posterior part on the uh, surface of the trapezius muscle. So, the inner, the outer landmark is like this. The inner landmark is the sternocleidoid muscle again. And you uh, found it uh, out that this muscle is crucial to find, to define, and can be a landmark for several of these muscles. Sternocleidoid muscle, and as you remember for, of your uh, anatomy courses, this is the only nerve who is doing a loop around the posterior border of the sternocleidoid muscle. It's doing a loop. Yeah? The muscle is in the way, and the nerve is doing a loop behind this muscle. So if you have a loop of any structure, and you do one scanning plane, so you have the nerve seen two times, the same nerve. OK? You have a loop, do a scan, you have both branches of the nerve seen. Can you see the nerve? with this information. Sternocleidoid muscle is indicated. Yes? This is the nerve. OK? You see the nerve twofold. And for better imagination, again, a video. Could you start it, please? Some videos are hampering running. Yeah, again, you see that, the loop? Deep, superficial, and the loop around the sternocleidoid muscle. You see it once, you scan it once, you understood it, you always find the nerve. Yeah? Using the landmarks and using the information, the basic information of how the anatomy runs in this field. It's a rather complex field. There are other fields that are not that complex, but the field of the plexus, of the cervical region, are rather complex. But now you have the items to also manage this region. Suprascapular nerve, the suprascapular nerve is one of the largest nerves um, of the plexus. It's a mainly motor nerve. And why this nerve is so important? This nerve innervates the rotator cuff. Most motions you do with the shoulder, lifting the arm and so on, next to, to axillary nerve, for example, but this, this nerve is following. The suprascapular nerve is one of the main responsible for normal shoulder motion and is 
uh, in a typical course, easily to be found. Again, outer landmark, this groove, proximal or cranial to the clavicle, supraclavicular groove. And if you do the scan sagittally, you see the artery, and you see one muscle here. What is the muscle coming from the cervical region ending up at the scapula? You remember? So called omohyoid muscle. And the, the fun is the omohyoid muscle has more or less the same curse as the scapular nerve has and is covering this nerve. So, artery, this is the first rib, for example. And this muscle, the lower belly, has two bellies, this muscle. And that with this information that the nerve, this, this muscle is covering the nerve, you see the nerve. Yeah? Yeah? And it's the most posterior and superior fascicle of the root C5. You can also find it like this. But this is a rather easier uh, algorithm to do it. And the other nerve responsible for shoulder innervation, motoric and sensoric, is the axillary nerve. And the axillary nerve is a rather often hampered nerve. When? Any idea? When is the... Yeah? Bye? Fracture, for example? Shoulder dislocation. The classic nerve of shoulder dislocation, yeah? Torn nerves. You have an atrophy of the deltoid muscle and you have sensory loss in a typical region of the lateral surface of the skin there. And how to find the nerve? Also, typical position. So-called arbor position. Yeah? Abduction and external rotation. We can position the patient like this. Yeah? And then you have the uh, capsule prone. You see the capsule or the humeral head here and the uh, subscapular nerve, uh, sorry, muscle, yeah? And here, in this, again, septum, run two structures, two tubular structures. is the circumflex artery and is the axillary nerve. Easy to do. Yeah? Artery, nerve. Always look for septi or fascias. I brought a video to you, how you can find it. Yeah? And here in the septum, you see that? Following, 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 going to the posterior fascicle of the plexus. Yeah? The image is not so good as the others were. Why? Correct. And deeper implements lower frequency. Yeah? You need lower frequencies to scan this nerve. Imagine patients having had a dislocation of the shoulder, swollen. Yeah? If you do it with a, don't know, 20 megahertz, you will find the shoulder or the surface to this depth. Yeah? You never find this region. So you have lower frequencies. Lower frequencies are sold by deeper penetration but lower resolution. And this is sometimes also the fact. Yeah? That's physics, you need to know. Uh, but you see, again, the nerve running in this septum. Easy to do image. So, go further. Recommended specials. We have not that much time, so I show you here some specials. And in the, in the uh, show and tell then, I show you some, and I show you again the landmarks. We do it together. Superficial and profound branch of the ulnar nerve. Why this? This nerve is, or this region is rather, rather often hampered, is uh, rather prone to trauma. And if you can assess the nerve there, if you can also assess the region by functional imaging, and this is unrevealed. Functional imaging also in motion by the hand, tendons, nerves, muscles. No other modality can do that. The patient comes to you and says, I had a trauma, I have pain there. You do an MR, 
you have some fluid and some muscles, and you know he has pain there. Unless the patient also already told you. You do not know if it's a functional impairment, what is the pathology. This is the best ultrasound can provide. Basing also on our landmarking technique, the superficial, superficial branch uh, on the hypotener, on this muscle, in this scanning plane. And the landmark is this tiny, thin muscle. It's a muscle 80% of the per persons have, so 20% don't. It's the previous palmar muscle, the long palmar muscle, you need you know, the tendon, and the previous is making, if you do like this, these tiny uh, lines here. Yeah? Okay? This muscle is covering this nerve at this position. Muscle nerve again. And the profound branch, a longitudinal scan at the level or orientation of the uh, me uh, fifth metacarpal bone, a little more proximally, so you have the hemulus here. And in this triangle, hypotena, in this triangle, you have the artery and, again, the profound branch of the ulnar nerve. Often hampered here, often to be assessed. And another branch of the ulnar nerve, I don't know if you remember, there's also a palmar branch of the ulnar nerve, who is innervating the surface of the carpal region, of the ulnar aspect of the hand, and is given up of in the middle, more or less in the middle of the uh, arm, at the forearm here. And you see the artery, the ulnar artery, the ulnar nerve, the main stem, and one fascicle who is dividing from that. Following this fascicle, is the uh, palmar branch of the ulnar nerve. Often hampered. Any surgery is done here. Or any trauma. This is prone to trauma. Whatever happens, whatever cut may hamper this nerve. Not here, because it's covered here with muscle, but it's getting up, it's getting uh, subcutaneously, and if it is in the subcutis, it may be... Uh, undergo a lesion, traction, uh, cut, or whatever. Yeah? Keep it in mind. And the other nerve, I will start again here, the palmar branch. I brought a video to you. This is the artery. The artery, and giving off this branch. You see it? And you also saw a little hump, a little pearl. This was a trauma of this nerve. Forget it in the meanwhile, but you can find here the typical aspect, a typical position of this tiny but clearly definable uh, structure. The distal uh, median nerve, again, the hand, often impaired by trauma, often under lesion. There's a tina branch and the motor branch. Finally, you find the sensible palmar branch, again, dividing from the main stem, a little small dot that's running, uh, neighboring the uh, tendon of the uh, flexor carpi radial muscle. And this neighboring structure is the sensible uh, nerve for the hand here, tiny monofascicular nerve. And even you can define by ultrasound the, uh, sorry? Back again. The TNR is innervated. The interosse muscles are innervated by the ulnar nerve, profound branch. The superficial are innervated by the motor branch of the median nerve. You think, yeah, okay, that's uh, small muscles, and, and, and what is the problem? If this hypotena or tina doesn't function, the hand loses about 70 to 80 percent of its function. You cannot close uh, your, your, your jacket or so on. Yeah? These fine motoric uh, items the hand has to do is basing on these nerves I showed you. And this is the motor branch, the flexor. Uh, of the, the short flexor of the thumb, it's this muscle in this 
scanner orientation, you see this nerve entering into the muscle, enabled again by uh, soft tissue. And again, here you see this entering of this nerve, exiting, entering. It's like a sweep up and down. And you can clearly define also, together with motion, with functional assessment, where the nerve is hampered, which nerve is hampered, what is the reason why the patient has its, his problems. So last but not least, superficial branch of the radial nerve. Again, an often hampered sensory nerve, and that's the final one of this talk. You again have um, landmarks, and the landmark here is the brachioradial muscle. The brachioradial muscle is this one. It's a huge flexor of the elbow, and at the uh, border of this muscle, there's a fascia, and in this fascia, this nerve is running downwards to innervate the uh, radial and dorsal aspect of the hand. Very often hampered by surgery, by hand surgery. Tenovaginitis de Carvin, if you maybe know, the, the cutting of the, of the extensor um, uh, retinaculum extensorum, often ends up in a lesion of this nerve. To find this, to define this, to have a maybe a therapeutic option for the patient. Easily and cool done by high frequency ultrasonography. So what we have here is the actually old book, the German version. As uh, Christoph Sim already told us, it's uh, a, a, a huge success. We didn't expect it. Uh, and that's why uh, Springer forced us to do also an uh, English version of this book. And all I told you of these, some of these uh, tiny nerves, together with the other nerves in the body, are to be found in this book. It's already in press and it's coming up in, I think, April this year. And again, let me invite you to this international workshop we're doing. It's an intensive two days workshop in London. Maybe you have time and it's usually much work to do. And it's also a wow of all the participants having done these workshops with us. Last year we were here in Vienna. <coughs> it's amazing. Yeah? It's amazing also the learning curve of the colleagues that are taking part in this in this uh, workshops we are doing and we are planning. <coughs> 15. Mm -hmm. So, don't know why this is here. Don't care, because I'm doing a little uh, demo. And the demo for you has the, uh, should be in, uh, that far interesting as we or e I am using the standard presets. Yeah? Remind this. These are the presets that the vendor has available on the machine when you get the machine. Yeah? There's no change. I, I, see, I touched the machine now the first time. So <laughs> you can do it yourself. And let's, let, let's try and, and I'll show you some of the nerves. So get a little to the cervical region. So, so, patient look like looks like this. Can I have a an image of the of the cervical region here? Okay, perfect, perfect. You see the lower left uh, quadrant. Yeah, you see the border here of the platysm muscle. You see it. And this is the sternocleidoid muscle. Sternocleidoid muscle, border of the platysm. Let's have a look what we find there. Maybe it's right what I told you. Maybe not. So, sternocleidoid muscle, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, we have the just for orientation. What is this structure? Don't cry so loud. I cannot hear you. Yes, carotid artery. And this is the vein, yeah. First scan the large things. And here, as, as the colleague told us, nervous vagus. So, what is this? What is this bony structure here? Can you imagine? Sorry? The transverse process, yes, that's, that's a vertebral body. That's it, transverse process. And exiting here of the transverse process should be the plexus. Brachial, cervical brachial plexus. So that's it. Okay. Again, landmarks to show you uh, something beyond the already told things. Or just have a look. Landmark, sorry, landmark again. This muscle is the anterior scalene muscle. And on the anterior scalene muscle is what? It's an artery, it's a branch of the anterior cervical uh, artery. And this is the phrenic nerve. Okay? Landmarks can only be the phrenic nerve. There's nothing else available here. Perfect. Did it perfect. Got on my Kopf lassen. Ganz normal natürlich. Again, cervical spine. Take this position. Carotid artery, jugular vein. Here, rather large nerve, vagus nerve. And here we have again muscles. Lungus, musculus, lungus, colli, and lungus capitis. And between them, you also see a structure here. What is the nerve here? Do you remember? I think you, you, you have your, your, your anatomy books found again to the <laughs> at home. This is the stellatum ganglion. This is the uh, sympathetic tract here. Yeah? Landmarks may be found in the book, for example. Then again, the plexus, the, the, the lateral aspect of the, of the uh, cervical spine, and you have here okay, the transverse process. And the transverse process has the an anterior and the posterior tubercle, usually. And between them, you see what is emerging here? This is one root. The point is, which root is it? Is it C4? Is it C5? Is it C6? So I'll show you a little trick. Keep the transverse process in mind. Transverse process. I go down and down and down, one segment after the other. Down, large transverse process, anterior, tubercle, low posterior, and again down, large posterior, and where's the anterior? It's lost. So we have a transition zone on the cervical spine. Every segment has a transverse process, and every transverse process has an anterior and a posterior tubercle, except C7. So I know and I'm sure this is C7. And starting with this point and with this segment, I can count. So. Again, okay. One posterior tubercle, C7. Going up, posterior, huge anterior, C6. Up, anterior, posterior, C5. Okay, that's it. And C5, we follow C5, we follow C5, 
that this is the posterior aspect of C5 executing here. And what I told you, with C5, the posterior lateral thick structure going down to the scapula, covered by the omohyoid muscle, this is the suprascapular nerve. Yeah? If you know the landmarks and if you know the scanning, it's easy to do. You can find all of these structures and all of these nerves. But I don't know. Okay? So for the cervical region, if you follow this region and if you do this region <coughs> standardizedly, also following the landmarks, it's rather soluble to find the according structures. So again, here, and then I stop with the cervical region, we have the plexus. I have the standard settings. I did not change anything to the settings. Only maybe now the depth a little bit, okay? The plexus here, anterior scalenous nerve, Posterior, uh, medias, medias, uh, medial uh, scalene muscle. And if you go like this, you have a root here. Follow out the root. And you have a nerve going down or outward here in some segments. Not actually within the muscle, with a soft tissue a band within on through the muscle. This is the long thoracic nerve coming out of C5, C6. Two or three roots going through the uh, medial scalene muscle and going downward to the lateral aspect of the thorax. So that's for the, for the uh, cervical region. The other thing is, let's have a look on the arm. <coughs> What was, the, what was the landmark for the radial nerve? Can you remember? Einmal abbiegen, einfach den Arm biegen, gegen meinen Widerstand, einfach so. Turn the hand like this, look lassen, look lassen. And it's abbiegen, yeah? He's flexing, ah, not, not well seen, oh. He's flexing, and you can see this, yeah? This is the muscle. He's coming down from the humerus bone, Brachioradial muscle. Yeah? This is our landmark here. Yeah? Biceps here. Yeah? Biceps and brachial muscle here. Got look at This is the landmark. Yeah? This groove. Going in here. Can you see the radial nerve? Perfect. Yeah? That's it. Yeah? Brachioradial muscle. And this is the whole cross-section of the radial nerve. If you follow the cross-section of the radial nerve downward, it's dividing. You can see the division. Yeah? And this is a point of where are we? You see the inner fascicular texture of the both uh, final branches. And this is, keep in mind, 14 megahertz. So we change to for example, number 24 megahertz to see the, the, the change, standard settings. <coughs> standard settings. Can you see the gain, information gain? You see these multiple tiny inner fascicular, fa fascicles. You see even a, a accompanying inner artery here, often. Small arteries are within the same soft tissue sheath. They have the same outgrowth indication by forming the body, embryologic outforming. Yeah? And you see again, huh? yeah. so Helmut told me we are 19 megahertz, so now we're going up to 20, 21. And you see the texture change. You see the information. You see that the profound branch going downward here yeah, has multiple inner fascicles. 
And this information is also crucial, for example, for assessing supinator uh, syndrome. This nerve, this deep branch, goes downward and is covered then by, this, uh, by the supinator arch, by the supinator uh, muscle here. Can you see that? And that's the point and that's the region where this nerve is usually compressed and has also functional loss. Let's see if this is also made. A scan longitudinally, can you see here, the longitudinal scan of the profound branch of this nerve. So, I'm gonna let's have a look then downward to the hand. <coughs> the median nerve, I stand with the same uh, high frequency probe from a contact frequency. So this is 24 megahertz and what you see now, keep this image in mind, <coughs> the point is what it costs, what you get. You have high resolution, you have subcutaneous high resolution, you see the inner fibrillus of tendons you lose information in the depth. 24 megahertz is a rather high frequency. Yeah? If you need it, this rather subcutaneous nerves, it's okay. You lose information in the depth. You have a depth gain, this is one centimeter here. Okay? You never sh scan the axillary nerve, for example, with a 24 megahertz. Yeah? Everyone who's telling you from a window side or whatever, I have a probe with 22 megahertz, you can scan in a depth of 4 centimeters, he is actually a liar. That's it. It's not possible. It's physics. Yeah? <coughs> but what you, what, you, sorry, what you see here is this inner texture of the, of the nerve. You see a little bifid orientation. You can also, in a longitudinal scan, see the cables, and the cables are these fascicles formed by hundreds and thousands of accents of this nerve. And again, following this nerve up and downward, we have one small, looking like fascicles, exiting this nerve, perforating the brachial fascia here, and going down, accompanying or neighboring the tendon of the flexor carpi radial muscle to innervate the sensory field of the uh, radial palmar uh, aspect of the, of the hand. Yeah? This is one of these crucial nerves here and with the 24 megahertz, remember the image of the, of the lecture first. You have huh? no. oh, the size. Maybe can, can, can I show you the size? Yeah, that's, that's actually... Oh! We are at 0 0.6 millimeter size. There's nothing, that, that, that's nothing what the standard, for example, MRI or whatever can depict. It can depict sizes like this, but with a, with a huge, huge consumption of time and whatever, yeah, and costs. I have the standard scanner with the standard preset and show you the nerve. And if he has pain and if he has a trauma there, you can exclude, for example, rather easily a lesion of this nerve here. And now, as a final, let's have a look if the guy has the muscle I told you before. Yes, he has. Give it all the time. Could you do like this? Here the muscle is not that huge as usually, yeah, a rather tiny muscle here. It's a cutaneous muscle, but it's covering the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve. Yeah? Landmarks, landmarks, landmarks. 
So thanks a lot. I think the time is over now. If there are questions, I'm here for you. Thank you. Super. Thank you. Thank you so much. <coughs> so, uh, wonderful presentation. And I think uh, everything is uh, available in the book now. And so uh, um, I think also our, our presentations will be put on the internet, uh, on the YouTube, right? Uh -huh. uh, so you can follow this. Uh, are there any questions or comments, <coughs> suggestions? <coughs> no. Right, here was one. No? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Everything clear? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am not used to uh, use these uh, fingers uh, yeah. to find all the locations, uh, just to uh, scan and you know, like for radial nerve, mm -hmm. uh, you go and you find, I mean, uh, sometimes when you don't know where to, uh, uh, where, where, uh, where such a nerve, where any nerve probably higher or lower uh -huh. is, you just start from the point when you know where to uh, Perfect. find the nerve. Perfect. And and then, and yeah. then you go cranial or yes. caudal. Yes, uh, that's perfect. That's the, the that's the, clas the classical algorithm everybody does. Yeah, you you know a structure, you know the structure has a whatever longitudinal extension, and you start where you know, and then you follow. And the the books, so the algorithm we propose here, is basing exactly on that. But the typical position where you uniquely find the nerve. X or Y or whatever, is often for the small nerves not so clear for the, for the standard scanner. Yeah? That's the point. So if you find or are looking for uh, several uh, special subcutaneous uh, sensory nerves, there are some, at, at some point, more or less tricky points of optimal visibility where you find it. And the outer um, landmarks are only for the first steps. So if you do it uh, 10 of, uh, times or, or more often, you don't need the outer landmarks. That uh, standardizedly, as, as you, you measure the arm and uh, find the point or so on. Yeah? That's just for beginning. So the point of these uh, books were to give what, what, what we, we heard of our, of our colleagues. This is very neat, this is very fine, but if I go home, I cannot do it. So you have this book, you start with the outer landmarks, where is it, where is it on the body, you find the inner landmarks by the scanner, and you find the nerve. Yeah? And if you are used to more and more and more often, it's no problem to also find very tiny nerves. Yeah? Try it. <laughs> yeah. You said um, you use this for um, in patients with injuries. I find them really difficult. I mean, sometimes yeah. I see a neuroma, then great, but otherwise <coughs> there's usually scarring. Yeah. And then, <coughs> I don't know. I mean, as I say, if I see a neuroma, it's great. If otherwise it's scar, I don't see the nerve. I don't really, I'm not confident either way what, mm -hmm. what has mm -hmm. happened to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, usually usually the, when, the, when the patient, is in, in, our, in our center, the patient comes, you have an idea which nerve should be the hampered one or which region of nerves. And you have a scar, that's correct. Maybe you see a neuroma. But for uh, prognosis or for uh, telling the patient, what, what can he do? Is the surgery indicated? You have to have a clear diagnosis. So if you say, we do, for example, neurotomy. You have, you, you're driven by pain. Your life has no sense. And you have to go uh, to, to get uh, rid of the pain. So you have to know which nerve is the one who's making the life of the patient uh, hell. Yeah? But because before neurotomy, you have to uh, define the nerve and which nerve should undergo neurotomy. That's the point. Do you do uh, the neurotomy? Or the sure, do sure. Yeah. Together with our uh, uh, neurosurgical colleagues, okay. they always want to know which nerve is it. They do first a block, or we do a block, to make the patient confident with, so now, is the pain gone, yes or no? And if the pain is gone, after the neurotomy, it will be like this. Some of the patients say, no, uh, the pain is not that, I'm, I'm now so uh, numb, that's, that's worse than, than the pain that, that, that's, that's happening. 
Yeah? And then if this is all done, you can say clearly to the patient, this is the nerve, this is what we are doing, this is the outcome we expected. Okay. Yeah? It's also a part of a forensic thing together. Yeah? Yes, 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 sure. There is a lot of, a lot of literature uh, in the meanwhile for the large nerves, for the blurring, for the loss of uh, fascicle texture and so on, for the large nerves, for the median nerve, for whatever, sciatic nerve and so on. In the tiny nerves, we're expecting a resembling pattern. And this, thanks to Canon, the high-frequency probes <coughs> is that what we are expected of them. Yeah? That's, that's the point. We have inner texture, we see inner texture, for example, we, we, had a, we had an image uh, of, of a sural nerve at, at uh, 33 megahertz. The sural nerve, or the, or the, the, the medial sural nerve, uh, is a classical monofascicular nerve, always been. You have one fascicle. So we had a, a 33 megahertz probe, made a scan and said, wow, there are more than five fascicles. Yeah? And this is what we are expecting of higher frequency for a confined portion of peripheral nerves, for example, as you see this, why I also addressed this uh, uh, problem of the depth. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the, the axillary nerve, for example, is never to be shown at the 33 megahertz. Yeah? But this pain-driven patient, the subcutaneous layer, the small nerves there yeah, are, I think, an excellent option and easy to be done. That's the point. You, the patient is uh, uh, done and assessed in within 10 minutes. Yeah? In a few for every nerve that's lying mainly in the subcutaneous uh, region. Maybe also, and this is uh, one, one uh, uh, thing we are, we are intensively dealing with at the head of the, of the trigeminous uh, nerves and of the facial nerve, that's uh, work that's uh, presently ongoing, that's working well. It's very well, yeah? 